Um, what this is really describing is that from 2005 you know, through to today, we've actually probably on about the third generation of GPON, which is gigabit passive optical network. It's the active electronics that sit at the end of the fibre and drives 2.5 gigabits shared capacity down toward the end user and shares 1.25 gigabits up from the end user, up to 32 end users on that piece of the network. But you can see that um, as you go beyond 2010 into uh, the half decade up to 15, next generation PON number one. So I say we've done three generations of GPON already. We're actually using the third generation in our network today. Uh, later this year, first generation of next gen PON comes out. What that does is it gives us, instead of two and a half gigabits to the end user, shared across 32, it brings 10 gigabits to the end user, shared across 32. Instead of 1.25 gigabits coming up in the network, it will give us two and a half gigabits coming up from the end user. So you can see already, you know, before this calendar year is out, we will have first generation, that next evolution of GPON available. Uh, will we jump to it? Probably not, uh, but we just know that it's there. As our uptake increases on the network, we start looking for ways to put higher speed fiber optic technology on the end of the fiber. We don't have to change the fiber. We take out the boxes on the end and we plug in new boxes. It's as simple as that. Beyond uh, this half decade to 2015, you start seeing a split in the way the plan works. So at the moment, in real crude terms, gigabit passive optical network is somebody switching a laser on really, really fast. It's telling an end user when it's their time to receive some of those light flashes on and off and get their signal. It tells them when they can put signal back into the network, literally by switching a laser on and off. It's just all... Um, ones and noughts, and time division multiplexed across that infrastructure. The split shows how we can continue on, I'll probably try and do the laser here, so the TDM branch here, um, time division multiplex, that continues switching the laser faster and faster as you go. Um, but around the same time, there is, we start stacking up the colours, if you like, on the fibre, same fibre, but you just have a different frequency, a different wavelength that you can actually send down the fiber. So switching the light on and off is almost like Morse code on the old copper lines. Uh, you know, we've got much more sophisticated, got some very, very um, complicated ways of sending signals down copper lines that were really only there originally for telephone. Well, we're, we're basically at sort of Morse code level in, in terms of where fiber is going to take us. We're at that very early stage where we just turn the light on and off as we get to higher speeds of switching on and off through time division multiplexing, but also then at the, with the same frequency of turning the laser on and off, you can actually put another wavelength in, double the capacity, another wavelength, treble the capacity. Fiber really gives you that opportunity to build, build on the one infrastructure, this roadmap of technologies as you go. Goes all the way out to uh, 2035 on this uh, slide. It's a slide that was pulled together by Analysis Mason. Yeah, to, to say that that's exactly how it's all going to work out would be a, a bit ambitious, but it's clear that there are uh, opportunities and lots of technology choices uh, available to us, say, using that installed fibre network that we're building today. <laughs>